Hey guys, what is going on? It's me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God video. So a couple of nights ago, I was playing and enjoying the new open beta. Of course, it wasn't functioning any different than closed beta for me, but the recent influx of players that did finally get to play it allowed everyone to partake in much larger group activities. And I was feeling pretty good. Got the new character slot and vault chest, filled it up immediately, went to my first secluded thicket in a very long time, and even snagged myself the Rygene armor. But unfortunately, bad things happen, as they do. And in Zolotl's final phase, which has still got to be one of the hardest tentacle phases to avoid, I was struck by lightning, not once, but twice. And it was a classic case of, oh, I thought I nexused in time, but I guess I didn't. It must have happened on the same frame where my mind reacted in time, but my body couldn't catch up. No matter the case, it happened. My idiot wizard died. And while I am in a very fortunate and privileged position with many different maxed characters and vaults full of gear, that initial shock that feels like you're getting the wind knocked out of you whenever you lose a character, doesn't really go away. It may not hit as hard as it used to. Obviously, losing your only character as opposed to one of many is going to sting more, but it really is like a form of PTSD. It's kind of insane. So anyway, that was kind of upsetting. I was feeling good and then that just kind of took the wind right out of my sails, but then a killer bee nest spawns. So I head on over, and if you've read the title, then you know how this ends. I actually don't mind the killer bee nest anymore as an event. It used to be my least favorite, and it seems like everyone else shared that opinion. Nobody ever wanted to do it, but soloing one of these is actually very possible now. And believe it or not, I quite enjoy myself while doing it. It's pretty anti-melee. Most attacks either armor break or armor pierce. You're surrounded by honey lava that does the same. Certain attacks paralyze and confuse, and there are so many tiny erratic shots. Knight is probably one of the worst characters you can bring because of these factors, yet ironically that was the character I was playing as. And to my surprise, when that final bee died, there were a lot of people on top of it so I couldn't see what the bag was, and I just saw the red behemoth quiver in there. And it took my brain like one second to realize, oh, that's a white bag. Everybody cleared out, I saw it, did a nice tasty exalt zoom in, and I claimed my reward. So I was feeling pretty good after that. The bee quiver is something I've never had before. Not even the original freezing quiver from the ice tomb, which these are technically a reskin of. I think it's a pretty cool concept how only the final bee that dies will have a chance of dropping the white bag. Yeah, it would have been cool if you had three times the opportunity, Kind of like how the Penaract has five, but this does give you a little bit of control over which one you get. If you choose to kill the same colored one last every single time, then when you do inevitably get that white bag, it will be the color of your preference. At the same time, however, this does create a slight competition with you and the other players. If you want the blue quiver, but everyone else wants red, then you're probably not getting blue. Personally, I think they all look great in their own way. Yellow is the most accurate to what a bee quiver would look like, and red and blue both look equally good, just as warm and cool variants. As items, however, they're completely identical. Just comes down to aesthetic choice. It would be cool if each quiver was slightly different, whether it be different stats, different shot particles, or maybe if it changed your character sprite a little bit. I know we have character dyes to change the color of your character, but now that we're on Unity, I think it would be interesting to see if the type of gear that you wore would change how your character looked. You could actually see them put on the armor that you're wearing, or they'll hold a little weapon that looks like the one you're using. They're still 8x8 sprites, so there's not a whole lot of detail you can fit on there, but it would be an extra way to customize your character in a way that doesn't affect gameplay. And if you didn't like the way that it looked, you can always include a way to toggle it on and off. But anyways, in regards to the item itself, this is actually a really good quiver. I'm sure most of you already know this, but just to give a quick rundown, it costs 90 MP, which is 25 more than tier 6, gives 3 attack and dexterity, the same as spectral, so you're losing out on the health and mana and 6 dexterity of elvish, but gain a bonus 3 attack, which kind of evens out, and is really good on the archer, especially with higher damage bows. It does not inflict paralyze, but in fact, it slows enemies for 5 seconds. Now, in every scenario, Paralyze will always be a more effective debuff to inflict upon enemies, because it makes them stand still, they're easier to hit, you can chain it, it's kind of broken. But a lot of late game enemies, and even some mid tier stuff like Dr. Terrible, can't be paralyzed. So in the scenario where you can't actually paralyze anything, having a quiver that can slow is the second best thing. And this is for an even longer duration than the paralyze. Not to mention we have three shots that individually do deal less damage than Elvish's single shot, but when combined, it can be double. And something that's cool is if you fire the bee quiver and covert at the same time, they actually fan out perfectly over top of each other. So if you're auto-firing covert, you'll always have a perfect visual of where your quiver will go. But aside from using it on bosses that can't be paralyzed, I found this to be extremely fun in Godlands. Really anytime there are a bunch of enemies surrounding you, because you have more range. 
you can hit more things at once. Yes, technically if you lined up a bunch of enemies, you could straight shot them with one Elvish, and that is just as satisfying to pull off, don't get me wrong, but it's also a lot harder to pull off, and is a lot less common. In bigger groups where you can't always control the direction in which the enemies move, it's nice to have an ability that can cover a wider area of effect, and that means that more enemies will be inflicted by slow, which will also make them a lot easier to hit. It is true that it's technically less mana efficient, than the tier 0 quiver if we're strictly looking at the slow duration on a single target. Yes, 45 mana for 3 seconds of slow. Tier 0 quiver is technically more efficient over time, but that's also only a single shot for like 15% of the damage. So B quiver definitely has enough pros going for it that outshine that one factor. The range on the shots is significantly cut down, and if you want all three shots to hit one target, it's like three and a half tiles in front of you. But I find that to be a necessary sacrifice to make this a properly balanced item. And on the enemies and bosses that you know you can face tank or maybe they're stunned, you can go right up at point blank and spam this. Overall, it's just a really good quiver that I'm glad I snagged. It fulfills its role as a UT by putting a spin on the archer's gameplay, allowing for the possibility of it being a main quiver, but not completely taking away what makes the main one special. It doesn't feel overpowered or unbalanced, it has necessary drawbacks, and considering its rarity, I would say it earns its place as an event white. Considering event whites are probably the most uncommon items in the game, we want them to be good. In fact, I'd argue we want them to be the best. I've been playing this game for over eight years and there are some event whites I've never had. And if I were to go on a whim, I would say most players don't have all of the event whites. Probably not even most of them. When I think about how many cube gods I must have killed by now, and I still don't have a Cronus. I think it's fair to say that these drops aren't exactly right around the corner. And if you're gonna have weapons and abilities that are that rare in a game, you'd better make them good. And I would say that the Behemoth Quiver it's about as good as it needs to be for its rarity. I've certainly been enjoying it, seems like most people do, and I'm happy to finally have one. Thank you guys so much for watching and letting me share that pleasant turn of events with you. And as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Alright. See ya.